take a turn. All right, it's five o'clock. Um, I'll call to order the um, special work session Tuesday, September 26, 2017. And I'll entertain approval of the agenda. So moved. Second. Further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Uh, Any opposed? Okay. We'll move right into the Wing Elementary planning session. And I have Bill Giesing here with us from Brock Miller. Hi, Bill. And you'll get to know these individuals, Bill, as you go through. And we have Scott Fleming with us uh, as well, is going to give us an overview uh, on the site, the floor plan. Uh, Bill's going to talk a little bit too about after after Scott goes through his presentation about the the, the budgetary aspect of, of the, the building project. So I'm going to turn it over to you all. Uh, <coughs> share with the board. Uh, <coughs> talk with the board. I'm sure they'll ask you questions as we go through this. So I'll leave it to you guys. Great. Right. Sounds good. Thank um, you all for coming down. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate it. You bet. Glad, glad to be here. Um, so what I thought we'd do tonight is um, Bill and I talked about how to present this. I'm, I'm going to give you a brief overview of the plans, the site plan, floor plan, the elevations, uh, and then uh, just kind of answer any questions you might have, tell you about some of the things we've been doing the last few months, and then Bill's going to touch on the, uh, the budget. You need to know that the process that you selected to pursue the construction manager at risk method, the, the process is working just like it's supposed to work. Under this process, with Brock Miller on board, they're working with us to go through the plans and work with your executive committee, uh, building committee, I guess, I'm not sure what the, the name of the committee is, but it's a darn good committee. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, uh, Scott. Uh, we've met several times, we've had a couple of uh, uh, web conferences as well, but we come up here to meet every few weeks, go over the plans, vet things out, go back, update the plans. And now that Brock Miller's on board, they've had our plans for several weeks and they've run some initial budget numbers. So you need to know the process is working. So what Bill's going to tell you a little bit about tonight, I'm sure, is, is how that process works and how we'll look at a number of different building system items as we proceed forward. Make sure you get as much in this building as your budget will allow and not leave anything on the table. So it's a good process and it's just one that's working. That sound like a good way to Great. Sure. sure. All you right. Do all this in the next what four or five minutes? I can do it in two. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a football game tonight? No. Okay. It's okay. I wouldn't be working. All right. So uh, I, I really this will take just five or ten minutes just to, to go over. I'm planning yes. to take all the time. No. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Let me get over here. So, can y'all see this okay? All right, I'm going to show you the site plan, and then the, the floor plans are large, so I can pull those up a little bit. There's a, there's a oh, there is? Okay. No, you're good. There we go. Does that help? Yeah, that's better. Yeah. I mean, I can put it right here if you want me to. I can't see it all. You all can get up. See it's yeah. right over here for you, guys. Yeah, all right. Let's let's go free. Come on up here. Come on up here. All right. I'm going to be scared. I should have made this up. Oh, that's fine. I wonder if we shouldn't set up there. Yeah, would that work better? Yeah. 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 Oh, oh, there, there. there you go. There you go. There you go. Get out of the bullet. I'll sit there. I'll sit there. This just feels weird to me, but uh, I've got a few policy changes I want to. Is there still a blur? Yeah. Is that better now? Okay. Okay. Uh, what I'd like to do is spend a few minutes going over the site plan, the floor plan, and then show you the uh, couple of elevations, one exterior and then a shot of the interior of the, the library. Uh, first of all, this is the, the same site plan that we've been looking at for months now. It's the 8.8 site, uh, site, uh, acre site um, that includes the school, which is comprised of right at 58,000 square feet. 
we do have room for an addition in the future, planned accordingly out to the west. Uh, we have a residential subdivision that's planned uh, between our site and the interstate. And there's actually a, a, an emergency access uh, gate and exit way from the uh, subdivision that we're going to allow to be able to use our uh, driveway in the event of some sort of emergency. And we'll work on the details of what that gate and fence situation might look like. Tom may want to talk about some of the fence uh, concepts he's, he's been discussing with us. But just to give you an overview, we've oriented the, the school toward the corner. This is the major corner, as you know. We like to do some sort of uh, landscape uh, signage uh, monument or emblem right here that uh, with Mark Wing Elementary, and then the road si uh, walkway system that would get you to the front door. Uh, we've got uh, the car and bus traffic divided up in this manner where the car drop off is out front and the bus drop off is in the rear. We've got a canopy system out front for the students uh, to use in case the, there's inclement weather and outside in the back as, as well. Uh, parking out front, 56 space, spaces out front, 43 faculty spaces back here and some service spaces in the back. Dumpster located right here. Uh, we've got playgrounds proposed back in this little corner of the complex where we've got a little bit more security uh, for the younger students. And for the older students, we have this larger playground at this end of the campus. So that's how things are kind of planned and structured. Okay. Any questions on the site plan? Nothing that you haven't seen already. Okay. All right, so uh, this is the same plan, just enlarged so we can see a little bit better. We're right at 58,000 square feet, 57,710. Um, and then we've got, looks like uh, 13,800 square feet, right at 14,000 square feet of future classrooms. And that could shrink or grow. It's just a placeholder right now for the future. So just to walk you through the, the plan, I mean, we have made some uh, changes to the plan. When we met with you last, we talked about safe space, we talked about restrooms, we talked about classroom sizes, locations. We've incorporated all those components into the plan uh, and then worked with uh, Tom and his staff to uh, flesh out a lot of these details. So we've got a main entry with a nice two-story volume, big airy volume with lots of natural light dumping into the central lobby. <coughs> the central lobby can be sealed off for security in case there's some sort of need to, to divide off the school in some manner, but we've got a set of doors uh, down each corridor. And then a set of doors that leads right into the cafeteria with not a full-blown kitchen, but more of a, I guess, Lori, how would you describe this kitchen? A, a catering type, warming kitchen? <laughs> Hybrid satellite, much better than what you have now. Do, you can do on-site cooking. We may still shuttle some of these. So it's not quite the big, massive, full-blown, but it's, it's a little bit, that's a good way to put it. It's a hybrid, hybrid kitchen. We spent a lot of time talking about that. In fact, we're in the process of talking about exactly how to equip that kitchen with certain types of equipment uh, in the, uh, to be housed there in the kitchen. So kitchen cafeteria right here in the, in the core. Um, as you come in, look to your left. There'll be glass along this wall where you can look into the library. We're going to have a really nice library here with lots of natural light looking out to the north. We've got a little rendering we can show you that in just a moment. And down this corridor we have art and music, so this kind of becomes the fine arts area of the, the, of the complex. A couple of title rooms on the other side of the corridor and in school suspension right, right here. Boys and girls restrooms, those are uh, these purple areas along with some other specialty spaces. But uh, the restroom's here to accommodate the cafeteria, so if you have an event for a public, you can seal these doors off, still have access for the uh, restrooms. You come down this corridor, you have an entrance here in the front and at the back to uh, access the gymnasium multi-purpose room. And another set of doors here where you could also lock down the school and just have this open to the public. So you come in the lobby, into this little vestibule. You have boys and girls restrooms on either side, three rows of bleachers, 
an 84 foot court. We spent a lot of time talking about the size of the court. 94 foot, 84, 74. Is this competition? Is it open to the public? Is it practice? All those things we discussed. And the committee, uh, and we actually talked about this last time at the board meeting, we landed on a, a 50 by 84 foot court, which certainly could be used for practice, but it's really intended just to accommodate the, the, the elementary school primarily. But things change in the future, who knows? This could be used for the, uh, for the public in the future. There's also a little platform. Um, uh, it's really a stage, but for building code, we like to call that platform because when you call it a stage you got to put stand pipes and all sorts of crazy code uh, upgrades but it's it's high enough where you could have a few steps and provide some sort of performance um, in this multi-purpose space uh, and there's also uh, storage in this space for chairs uh, so you could bring chairs out in the multi-purpose room and set them up on the floor right now we've got vinyl composition tile just vinyl tile flooring. We've talked a lot about sports turf or vinyl flooring or carpet. Right now we're using uh, vinyl composition tile in that space. That's what's priced. Uh, it's not, you know, this is a cafeteria, so this isn't intended to be cafeteria space, although you could eat in there if you cater to the event, I suppose. Uh, but primarily this is a really good workhorse elementary school gymnasium. Yeah. Back of the house type functions. So we had exit going out the rear? One right here for code, you'd have to have two means of egress. <coughs> there, we could leave no... Enough? Yeah. Mm -hmm. There might be a couple of doors here, Scott, uh, but the intention is we'd have <coughs> exits here and then here. Two's enough in that spread out that, that far apart. Okay, so heading down the hallway down to the right, first this blue area is your administrative office space. Again, you have glass here, mirroring the glass on the uh, library side. Coming to an admin area, you have um, conference office, 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 storage. Primarily your typical administrative functions. Then on this side of the admin space, you have speech, which is access from this corridor, where students could uh, access from the corridor here. And then a hallway where students can access a counselor space and then the nurse's office right here. We've actually added a teacher work area. This was a special ed classroom here, the teacher work area here. We flipped those so that now the teacher work area is accessed through the admin area and then also through the whole uh, doorway out into the corridor there as well. I think that's a good spot for teacher work area. Another question, Scott. Yep. The, the conference room. Mm -hmm. is, it, is that going to have glass walls in it? Uh, you know, this little space right here, Scott. We haven't haven't figured that out. I mean, we could we can do that. I mean, we could. You could put glass here, like storefront, and some sort of blind system if you wanted to have a private meeting. But that's what I'm getting at. I, mm -hmm. I think you'd want some privacy there. So, mm -hmm. if they're meeting, you know. Yeah, we could we could make that solid there. There's a spot there for a window, so you could get plenty of natural light in that direction. Yeah, good point. Okay. So down this corridor, special ed classrooms, a storage spot. We like to use these little knuckles right here in the buildings. Here's another one where you can't really get a window to put restrooms and functions where you don't need any natural light. We're big proponents of natural light wherever we can get it into a, a building, which really kind of uh, is really illustrated by the way these long wings run out, where you get lots of opportunities to add windows wherever you can. So we actually added another bank of restrooms. We had half as many restrooms when we originally designed this plan, and there's no way in line at this school for any restroom, okay? I promise you there's a lot of there are plenty of restrooms between this bank, you got boys, boys, girls, 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 boys, boys, uh, girls. So you've got a lot of restrooms. And then you've got a little spot here for the admin too. So they've got the little private restroom. I think there's one back in here. No, I guess we took that out. No, it's right here. That's what I'm saying. In the kitchen. So a lot of restrooms. And we like them located here because they can access both the first and second grade wings and the third and fourth grade wings. 
classrooms down this corridor, 24 uh, seats are shown here. We're actually showing little computer nooks in each of these classrooms. And the only reason we're showing this is we're just showing a couple of different ways you can configure those classrooms, which is another design decision that we'll go through uh, when we start selecting the furniture. Uh, so these aren't fetched in stone, they're, they're just placeholders right now. Okay, so you head down this corridor and you've got option to take a right and head out to the uh, play, uh, playground area or left and go through this walk up here and access the cafeteria or head over here and access the bus lane. So really good circulation. And then out, all the way out to the end, which would access the, just the bus lane there as well. Is that canopy over that? I'm just coming out of the middle of the fourth grade. You know, yeah, we're not showing any canopy. Oh, that, that might be something we could take a look at. But we were really trying to limit the canopies near the entrances to the building. And that's something, that's an easy add alternate, or we could take a look at what the cost would be. Today. Well, just thinking in the winter, you know, trying to get to the cafeteria. Oh, long is this true? Yeah, it's going inside. This is really yeah, like a shortcut on a pretty day like that's this. True. Yeah. That's true. That's true. So there, there's 19 regular classrooms split up between the four grades, and then you've got two tile rooms and a speech room. Is that right? We got 19 regular classrooms, two special ed, two title, music, art. And you may, some people include library in those instructional spaces, some don't. Then you still have the speech room, yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry, yes, and the speech, that's correct. Are the classrooms all the same size, or are they graduated for, you know, the I grade? Think, see, I think they're all the same size. I think we end up. How many classrooms do we have in Matthews? 16. We have 16. So we're going to have three extra classrooms potentially to move some of the, the load, like the load at Math or excuse me, Lee Hunter and Southeast. Um, how that process looks and how we go about doing that, I don't know as of yet. But it'll give us that option. Yeah. Well, and besides those additional classes, we now have that dedicated music and music or art. Yeah. That's, and so mm -hmm. now they're using art of the cards, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well I your title of classrooms. You got good size. And you said 24 students per classroom. Mm -hmm. That's what we're so showing in here. 456 students. Mm -hmm. Did you do that in your head or do you want to keep long hair that one? I did 20 <laughs> times. 24. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There we go. Okay. There we go. Oh, yeah. Who's the banker? I have a computer for that. <laughs> that's right. I have a computer for that. That's impressive. Um, what else do I want to point out about this plan? Um, I mean, it's, it's a really efficient plan. You also need to know we started out with you know, 57 to 59,000 square feet. That's about where we ended up, you know, 57. And we haven't cut a thing. We were talking earlier today. There's not, I can't think of a, maybe I'm, I'm missing something, but I can't think of anything that we've cut programmatically. You know, there might be some quality decisions and things that we might have to talk I'll ask about. for your size. I know last time we looked, there were, you know, multiple classroom sizes, and right. we talked about coming to the, this. Yeah. Do we know, I guess all of them got, I mean, is that the biggest? classroom that there was previously or did we kind of find middle ground or some of them are small we we enlarged those some of the smaller okay. ones they were too too small sure. we went back and took another look at them um, and I wish I brought that square footage to, to you but I can tell you that these are more than adequate to accommodate 24 students in these grades in probably the 750 range I remember right, that's what I saw somewhere, 750. Yeah. It's not on this question. It's got that other playground kind of, you know, one of the concerns of not having a play area. Do you think that takes care of that, having the two areas? Oh, I think so. Yeah, it does. And you really, I mean, you've got this this area up here, too, that, you know, you could you could use it. In fact, you can use that, too. You really got all that, that area. And that's a big, that's a big area right there. It's a lot of, a lot of ground. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
We're going to chain link, I guess, the big area. That, that well, clear. maybe we discussed this and maybe we have not, but you remember that Southeast Elementary had the defensive donated by uh, a company here in the town of Lowe's. And you know, we're two years out, potentially that, that could go that direction again. Oh, that would be great. You know, that, that's in the perfect world if we can get that yeah. worked out. It needs to be found. But we yeah, do need to have a fence. Yeah, yeah. sure. I think you don't want a bunch of holes just kind of open up to you the whole thing. So, and we, we haven't really defined that detail. We, we need to, in fact, one of the things we need to talk about is being a civil engineer approved tonight too, just to make sure we've got Yes, I've got that on the agenda. Right. So once we get on board, then we'll do the site issues. Okay, questions? Scott, did uh, Waters contact you about the uh, radius for the bus turn? Mm -hmm. He had sent me a question, I told him to contact our transportation department. Okay. So I didn't know if he had got back with you. We'll double check that. <clears throat> Thank you, Mark. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about elevations. Okay. Wing Elementary. First thing we're going to do is we're going to use a different color for that sign because you can't really see it very well. Uh, we're really happy with the way this has evolved, and um, uh, what we're showing here is what we think is going to be a really attractive building that I think really is going to set the tone for sites and schools for the the next generation of, of buildings that are going to be built. What we're showing is this big, large, two-story volume that will dump a lot of natural light into this area, make it a really nice, appealing, inviting place to come and want to visit. And th there are also opportunities to dump uh, daylight in on, on either side of this, this element. Uh, we're showing a mansard roof around this core area, which would begin here and here, then the wings would, would run out just masonry with enough parapet to, to screen the rooftop units that will serve the, the classrooms. And we've got a nice series of windows, probably storefront type windows, marching across the front, which just really give a nice, I think a nice uh, inviting uh, entry. And we've got the, the, the uh, canopy system included in the budget, uh, along with uh, a nice uh, canopy element out front as well. So uh, typical concrete uh, masonry unit, concrete block, load-bearing masonry, steel bar joist construction with uh, some sort of TPO or uh, diff not TPO roof. Mike's got a spec on the roof that we're going to use. Uh, but uh, positive draining roof system, a uh, lot of masonry, right, masonry, and our, our hope is to develop uh, as low maintenance facilities possible. Uh, Lori has sent us a number of different um, images for libraries, and I think the one uh, word that I would use to describe the images that she sent us is colorful. So we have uh, we have taken that and run with it. Um, she's also sent us some really cool details, like that one with the little tree that was planted up against the wall that created some shells, which is something that we might uh, develop on these these uh, these walls here, but. Just to remind you, on the floor plan, uh, we're showing uh, there'll be a set of doors here where you can enter the uh, from this side or here on this side. Circulation <coughs> desk, and then a series of low shelves, and a little pit right here. Well, it may be sunken, it might be at the same level, but a place where class can come in and do some sort of studying. And then across the front, uh, these little reading nooks. And Lori, there was a the Matthews family. I think you talked about a donation. Uh, yes, for I've not had this discussion with the board members. My my apologies. Um, but uh, most of you know Kim, Kimberly Adelson was one of our teachers at Matthews, and she passed away over the summer. And her family had contacted us, uh, contacted Crystal and Todd first, and said we want to do something in her memory, and they. They didn't realize at the time, her brother is, the, is my contact person on this, and he didn't realize that we were getting just in the perfect planning stage. 
And so we mentioned that we wanted the library space, our, our libraries, you know, a lot of them are just closets and afterthoughts in our elementaries, and we wanted this to be a focus. And the family is very interested in putting um, up to as much as $10,000 into the library space to make it a really special place in her honor. So we kicked around the idea and talked with different ones about a Kimberly's Corner in the library in her honor. So that very early stages, but he called again yesterday and said, no, the, that I can make the money be there. We, we don't want this to not happen. Very good. Well, if you decide to go down that route, which I, I think it, it's great, uh, if it works with your policies, et cetera, which I hope it does, we can, I mean, first we heard of, of it was today too, so we could take that idea and concept and maybe we <coughs> develop that corner into something that might honor that point. So. But you can see the, the bookshelves that we have marching across here with some sort of wood that really warms the space up. And then little, you can see little reading pads, little uh, cushions that the kids can sit on. And you know, kids learn, students learn differently now than they did back when we were that age. And you just want to provide a number of different learning opportunities and seating opportunities for the students. So that's what we developed in this space, which I think will really be I think it'll be a really dynamic space right there at the front entry when you walk in. Big tall ceilings, and you look to your left, and you see this big colorful space, and, and I think it'll be a really nice statement as you walk in. Tom, are we considering that this could be archaic 10 years down the road, and that we need to have USB ports and areas and, and be we, able to we, go? Yeah, we have talked about that as far as, we've talked about the number of USB ports, talked about the number of outlets throughout this facility so that it's not, or it is going to be really usable during the next 10 to 20 years. Right. But then again, you never know about technology, because technology is changing as we speak. So it's very difficult to keep up with that. But we want to do the best possible job as far as, as, as keeping it updated for the next five years. When we get the plans as we go through the next phases, uh, Scott, we're going to sit down with Tom and his staff. We're, we're going to go through every room, every wall, make sure we have the electrical, plumbing, every everything we might need, data communications, uh, account for every space. One thing you're talking about that too, and it's called maker space, correct? Yes. Which kind of ties in the, the STEM or STEAM, you know, the science, technology, and so on. We're trying to look at having an area within the library and tying it into the art room as well, which is right next door, so that they could have like a maker space. And it's really a place where kids can go and be creative and to do what they need to do as far as the, the science, the technology, electronics, and the math, and so on. We need That's something we need to develop in this area probably a little, bit, a little bit more detail, but that's, um, you see distance learning labs now being converted to maker spaces now, where 3D models are being put in schools and robotics, and like STEM programs, mm -hmm. things that just weren't even on the horizon 10 years ago, five years ago. Making drones. <coughs> you know, used to be drones were a big deal, now it's just like every time. No, got a drone, don't you? Uh, the school district, actually. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, what I want to leave you with tonight is a couple things. First of all, we're moving on the plans, we're on schedule. The plan is to bid the project in, in January. Uh, the process is working. We'll, we'll talk about that in more detail in a minute. But also, to let you know the direction that the, the project is headed architecturally. And just make sure we're headed in the right direction. Does anyone have any questions for Scott? What was the, um, what are we determining about this oh, we've, yeah. we've got three options, uh, and Bill, Bill can talk about that, but we're, we're looking at, at three options. One is to take this corridor system right here and beef it up. We've done that in, I guess, three different projects in Tennessee. These corridors are already concrete block walls. And so what we do is we actually uh, pour a slab on top of 
that spans across the corridor, okay? So you have this little shelf down the corridor. And then these doors are all just heavy duty hinged that lock in place in case there's an event. So that's one option. The second option is to take the cafeteria, which has a little shorter span than the gym. And, uh, and you can, by the way, you can house all of your faculty and students within that corridor system. Likewise, in the cafeteria, huddle up in the storm, there's plenty of room, of course there's room there. This is the other option we're looking at with shutters on the windows. Obviously, you want natural light in your cafeteria. We think this is probably going to end up being the least expensive option. And then thirdly, this is going to be the most expensive, but we think, and Bill brought this up, <coughs> give him credit, I mean, we're going to run all, all three of these out, or Lori brought, we all brought it, the whole committee brought it, uh, just to give everybody credit. But we're going to at least run all three options out, figure out which is the least expensive. There's some day in and day out practicality issues with these doors are a little heavier, a little harder to deal with, but if there is an event, most of your students probably going to be in the classroom, so they're, they're closer there. But we'll, we'll run all these out and, uh, and then present them to you, and you can establish one of these. Great. What is the little black thing down in the parking area? Here? Yeah, very Dumps. Nice. That's a dump. <coughs> yeah. Well, and their concern, and I expressed this to Tom and Mike because I think it was with Kenny Rogers when they did their new addition, they didn't allow enough space to pick up the dumpster. Yeah. So they had to pour uh, more money in a, in a concrete yeah. area to get them in yeah. just for that purpose alone. Well, well I, sorry for them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to say we never made a mistake like that, but we probably have. But yeah, we'll, we'll just double check. Okay. <coughs> Any other questions on the plans? Talk about your absolutely stuff. First of all, I would like to thank the board for entrusting Rockmore Construction to do the construction management. We're really looking forward to the project. Um, this will probably be my easiest meeting because just coming on board, I'm kind of off the hook for everything. I get to blame Scott for anything <laughs> that happens right now. Right. But I do want to talk through a little bit of the process. I know that. Um, Scott and Chad and Matt were in on the interview. We talked about that extensively, but for the board members that weren't, um, the first part of what we are going to do as uh, construction managers is what we call the pre-construction services. And it is a phase of the projects that most general contractors never get let in to that darkness that happens in places like this and meetings like this. Um, and it's great to be a part of it because it's so frustrating to bid a job and then you find out that you're the low bidder but maybe it's over budget the owner doesn't have enough money for it um, and the first thing that we do is start doing value engineering we take a look at well, what can we do to bring this back down into budget and one of the big things that I believe the construction managers do in the pre-construction phase is kind of conduct that value engineering <coughs> throughout the process um, the Components of what we'll do throughout pre-construction will help, um, we'll, we'll work with Scott to do preliminary budgets, and we'll do those at a couple different uh, points throughout the design phase. We've already done our first one. As the plans get developed and he's got more details in there, we'll take another bite at the apple, and we'll see how that looks and make sure that we're headed down the right road. Because we've got a budget in mind. Tom's already told us, 11 million, that's it, can't go above it. So, we know what that, that end point is, okay? Now it's our responsibility to make sure that as we go along this road, we end up at that point. Uh, so we'll do, prelim we'll do budget estimates at a couple points throughout the uh, procedure. After each time we do a budget estimate, Scott and I will spend time together taking a look at what type of construct, what type of construct, uh, types of construction we have on the project. Uh, we'll take, take a look at what things might be higher cost than what we might be able to uh, realize in another type of building construction or maybe a different type of material or a different type of system. Um, we'll work not only with his engineers, but we'll work with the tradesmen that do this every day. 
Um, in fact, we've already employed uh, several subcontractors and suppliers to help us with the first estimate. Um, and we'll continue to develop that. There's, uh, the construction industry is very dynamic. And just like Scott and I were talking earlier, there are factors that can impact that final construction cost beyond just what you're going to do in deciding what do we want in the building and then Scott's process of drawing it out. Um, labor configurations, labor contracts, uh, who's busy and who's not busy, those change all the time. And so being able to stay in touch with the contractors are going to be the major contributors in your construction, finding out what their workload is, what the labor availability is, what material availability <coughs> is, even um, trends that we're seeing right now. Uh, everybody knows about the two storms, the two hurricanes. Uh, told Scott earlier that we're just now starting to hear about some of the impacts of that. Copper pricing is going up. Uh, PVC is being limited to certain contractors, how much they can get. All of those things are factors that you couldn't foresee a year ago, and it's really difficult for us to see what's going to happen in five or six months from now when we start bidding this out. So that's why we'll try to stay on top of it as we go along. If we see that prices for certain types of systems are really going to increase the cost, if there's options, we'll take a look at <coughs> trying to enact those and put those into place. Uh, so the budget estimate is a part of it. We'll also do scheduling, as Scott talked about. We've already hit that, um, we've set that milestone for being able to bid the project sometime in January. Um, he'll go through his design documents and then construction documents, and once those are complete, I'll put bidding packages together. We'll put it out to the market. I've already worked with Tom on what contractors or suppliers in the area that he would like to make sure that we solicit for that work. Um, and then I'll flush that out with anybody else that I know in the area that does the type of work um, that you're going to be having on this project. So we'll try and incorporate anybody that the district has an interest in that's qualified, plus anybody else that I can see in the community that would be interested in working on it. Um, we want to get good competitive bids, so we'll put packages together. We've already got word out on the street, so most contractors I talk to, they're aware of the project, um, and that kind of interest always helps the process because contractors will keep that slot in mind and they know, hey, Wing Elementary is going to be coming out right here, you know, and they might defer a project at, at this point because they'll wait for this one to come out. Uh, hard to say what the construction industry is going to be doing in four or five months from now. Um, Scott and I were talking that right now it's a very busy time for contractors in the area. Um, don't know what that's going to be like come January. I hope that there is not so much work that no one wants to really look at things because it's a factor of the industry that when there's less work out there, people get a little bit hungrier. Pencils get sharper and prices get better. Um, so, going through the process, doing the budgeting, that will help us determine as we go along kind of what that time frame is going to be like or what it's going to look like at that point in time. But for scheduling standpoint, I'll start putting preliminary schedules together for the construction aspect of it. If we bid in January, it's probably going to be about a month time frame to get bid packets out, to get pricing in, to evaluate those, discuss them with Tom and with Scott, and then we'll bring that forward to the board and make recommendations based upon all the bids we've received on not only who we would like to use for different aspects of the work, but also what that guaranteed maximum price is going to be. The contract we have set up right now is to do pre-construction services, but there is a point in time once the documents are done, I'll bring you a price and say, okay, here's what I can build it for, and this is the number. Um, and we will, through our discussions about who we want to use and who's got the low price, there might be some give and take along that lines, but for the most part, by the time we leave that meeting, we'll have a price that we can all agree on, and that's what we'll write our guaranteed maximum price for. Um, once we finish that, it's a matter of getting contracts out to the field and starting on the work. We anticipate the work taking about 12 to 14 months is about what you have on the schedule. And I think that's very realistic. Uh, so we would look to start construction sometime in March of next year. 
and then finish up the following April, May, sometime in that time frame. Um, we've discussed whether there's benefits to try to have it done earlier. Uh, trying to have it done by your break at mid-year doesn't make much sense. I don't know if it's real achievable. Um, but bottom line is we're going to keep the construction process moving as quickly as possible once we start. The less time it takes us on site, the more money we save in, in um, all of the costs that are involved. So there's no need to delay it. We'll get it done as fast as we can. Preliminary budgets. Uh, I mentioned that we've already done our first preliminary budget. I'm not going to talk a lot about it because it's part of the process. Um, I'll say that I came up with a little bit bigger number than we have in our budget. Um, but that's not surprising. Um, the way we've parsed up the budget, we know we've got 11 million and there's some things we're going to take off the top. We're going to take the design fees off the top. There's No, I mean, we're going to block them out, not take them out. <laughs> That is so funny. I We're going to protect those that. design fees. <laughs> there's a couple other things that are there. We've got some surveying investigation that we're going to hold off. And Scott's already done some estimating for your FF&E, your fixtures, furnishings, and equipment. Tables and chairs that go in classrooms, computers, um, the <clears throat> library furniture, those things. We've got kind of a lump sum for that. So you take the design fees, the investigation, you take the, the fixture furnishings and equipment. Everything left over is what I've got to build this. And so what my process, what my responsibility is in the next four, three to four months predominantly is to work with Scott and say, Scott, yeah, we can, we can do this in that dollar amount or we're getting squeezed pretty tight or I think we've got some flexibility. Do we want to look at other things that we might want to include in there? My first take at it was I was a little bit above that construction uh, budget that we had. Like I said, I'm not jumping out in front of traffic right now. Um, it's not quite a 30,000 foot view of the project. Um, I would call it more of a five to 10,000 foot view because we haven't just gone in and said, well, schools, you can build those for $200 a square foot times 58000 that's this much. You can do it that way. Um, and we have used comparable pricing with other projects um, to help us get to the point we are right now. But what we've also done is we've gone out to subcontractors that bid work every day. And Scott's provided us with 50% drawings of the architecturals. And then kind of some narratives for the civil, the mechanical, electrical, plumbing, the structural. And we've gone to contractors and said, help me with a budget on this. And so now that we've got that first budget number in mind, that allows Scott to take a look at what we've come up with. It allows us, as we're talking about building systems, uh, materials, finishes, uh, constructive process, allow us to refine that a little bit to get that number a little tighter, a little tighter, a little tighter. At this point in time, like Scott said, we don't need to make any major decisions on how the building looks, the footprint of the building. Um, but as we go along, we'll refine some of the things about what goes into it and how they're constructed. And so the process is moving along. Um, I, it's right where I expect it to be. And um, I would guess that probably in the next two months, so probably when you have your board meeting in November, we'll probably get a point by that time that the architectural plans will not only be much more developed, but we'll probably have some mechanical, electrical, plumbing, some structural, some civil. And I'll take those out to the same group of contractors and we'll do the process again. And we'll see where those numbers are coming in. And uh, we'll continue to refine that as we go along. So that's what my process will be. Um, is there any questions that you would have of what Brock Miller is going to be doing or what our responsibility in the process is? I guess I'll put you on the spot. It sounds like you're kind of been dancing around it. I'm not going to put you on the spot. I have not been dancing around it. Well, I mean, as far as, you know, you know the number, 11 million. Yes. What's your level of confidence that we can build this or something very comparable? comparable 
You said you were above that number and you didn't want to say the number, how much over you were, and I understand. I, I wasn't, and, and, and the main reason, Matt, is not just to be uh, evasive, yeah. but understanding what that number means, um, understanding the process that we've been through to get to that point, and understanding what contractors have had to look at. It's the first take, and the most important thing to get a good number on any project is to have well-designed documents, well-coordinated, thorough documents. And we're basically going to people and saying, on a napkin, on a napkin give me a budget on you know this, uh, this $11 million project on a napkin. <laughs> it's a little more detailed than that because yeah. Scott's folks have helped us out. You know, I'm, yeah. We've told them, hey, give me some idea of what this wall is going to look like so I can give this to my concrete guy and my mason. Um, so it's a little bit more involved than that. Yeah, so we're over. So we're at a point where I'm not talking to Scott saying, hey, man, let's, uh, let's get rid of that BCT in the gym and let's go with some sports flooring in there. You know, I would like to get to that point. But first thing is we've got to have confidence that this facility in this square footage with the usage that you expect that we can get you there. And, yeah, so that number was over. I've got a lot of confidence that we can do that. Uh, and my intent is to always, where there's got to be give and take, is to give and take in areas that it's not going to impact your ability to use that, or your ability to use that facility for what it's intended to do. Do you, um, do you have an FFD number in mind, either one of you? Yes, mm -hmm. well, I think we had about, uh, well, about pushing half a million dollars for <coughs> loose furniture. So the way I describe it downstairs, you take the building, turn it upside down, you shake it, anything that falls mm -hmm. out, it's about a half a million dollars worth of classroom furniture, library furniture, kitchen, uh, or uh, uh, cafeteria, cafeteria, library furniture. So, so you're, you're looking at 10 and a half million in your building, all the furniture, 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 furniture. Actually, the, with the, the budget that uh, Scott initially worked up, mm -hmm. I'm estimating that the cost of the work, the, the construction portion of it, and that's um, everything that goes into the building and stays there, the labor that puts it there, and then my fee and my general conditions. Those are kind of the three components that the contract addresses. That's going to be about $9.7 million, right in that area. And then the balance of it are the fees that Scott gets to keep that we're not going to take away from. <laughs> <laughs> that FF&E, and, e, and then the uh, survey and investigations. Okay. Uh, and there are some things that the owner has some responsibility for, but I don't think there's any significant uh, portions to that. I think the owner picks yeah. up the testing, you know, which is pretty typical. Um, there's no land costs in this budget. That's already, I guess, it was donated. Um, you know, so there might be a few other things that we have to uh, figure out where they go. The whole, the whole reason you're going through this process is for us to have one of those uh oh moments early, yeah. and yeah. we. It's not. It That's not I guess is really what I was asking. Right. Like you guys, I guess you said it. I'm not jumping out from traffic. So. No, no. And I called Scott. And, and Scott, I, you know, I didn't give Scott all the opportunities that he needed to have because he just saw that budget when we walked into the office today. Um, and he needs to take a look at it because this is definitely a cooperative effort, uh, and we want to take a look at both of them. And there's some things he's going to say. Bill, this number just doesn't make sense. Yeah. And there's some things that I'm going to say. Hey, can we do this this way? So yeah, that number, like I said, I've got the expectation that we're going to be able to find the ways to get the work done. Um, and I've kind of alluded to the factors that we can't foresee when next January comes. Uh, material pricing due to natural disasters, what the workforce load is in this area and how busy and hungry people are at that point in time. But we're going to try to keep in touch with that as we go along so that we've got a real good idea of how it's trending when we get there. I feel you asked, are we confident? Uh, you know, I, I, look, I'm yes, I, I think we can get there. But every job is comprised of scope, which is square footage, plus all the stuff you put in the building, quality, right? And then the budget. The budget's set, it's 11 million. So the two variables we have are the scope. I don't think we've got to cut the square footage anywhere. We might have to look at maybe some of the furniture and the quality. Those are two things we have to play with. So maybe some of these 
items we have to look at from a quality standpoint. Maybe there's a different way to do that canopy system. It still gives you a great look, but it's more economical. Uh, and, and the other thing to point out is we can bid alternates too. Those two canopy types, uh, for instance, or concrete paving and asphalt paving. Easy stuff to look at. And so that's part of the beauty of the process. Um, so it's, this is not uh, an unusual position at the end of the Well, I just kind of wanted your overall sense. Is, and I get that from you now. But I think we can make this happen. There's going to be some work in between now. Absolutely. Okay. If we, our job tonight, and I can speak, I'll speak for myself. If we had a major budget problem tonight, we tell you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And that's, and that's, just, a, that's kind of what, that's what I'm Just the process. Yeah. But there'll be some okay. decisions that we'll need to make to make sure. $11 million is a lot of money, but still, you got a lot of school. So there are going to right. be decisions that, if you had $111 million, we'd right. still have difficult decisions to make. So we, we'll get Because you, both of you, this is not your, this is not the first school you have you all worked together some before? No. 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 But these guys have got a great reputation. Looking forward to working with them. And I know Scott's been with the district a long time, and you know, same thing. I've heard great things from the contractors that have done the past projects. Um, and you've got a big site too. Not only a big school, you've got a big site. You know, there's a lot of things that go in there. Um, and you know, if like you said, if there are things. If we hit some budget crunches, you know, we're going to try to. Take the right approach to how do we handle them, you know, because uh, there's different ways of getting you to the end game, even if everything that we want to be in there can't be in there. And I know there's a lot of wants, you know. Mike called up and said, "Hey, how about a how about a chiller system instead of a direct exchange?" And I'm like, "Oh man, you know, uh, that'd be really great, but they're really expensive, you know." We just replaced the chiller with building buildings bigger than that. But they're expensive. They're, expensive. They're, they're great, you know, from the standpoint of your economy and their abilities, uh, but it probably doesn't fit in this budget. And that's the kind of things we're going to look at. Most people, the everyday person that goes into that school, they probably won't know if they've got a VRF, a VAV, a, a chip, you know, four pipe system, or a direct exchange rooftop system. They walk in, it's comfortable. But there's a huge variation in the cost between the all those different systems. And that's the way we'll look at it. You know, and some of the things we may have to decide, okay, we can't put this much money up front, so we may have to go with this system here to get it in budget. And that's the kind of things we'll look at. If it gets down to the point that we can't get you into the building for that dollar and have everything on the site, you know, we'll take a look at, well, can we defer putting a playground in right now? Maybe we've got the space for it, but we don't put the, you know, and I'm not saying we're gonna do that, but there are always things that we'll look at that doesn't preclude your ability to have all the things that you want um, if we can't forward everything at that point in time. But our whole goal is to get you as much as you can for that dollar. And you're doing the playground equipment and all of that, you're doing it from A to C, right? Well, that's what, uh, that's kind of what we've been going over, and that's what yeah. we've budgeted. Yeah, that's the Brock Miller playground that's going to be corporate. <laughs> <laughs> no, Brock Miller, so First State Community Bank, uh, <laughs> Swimming Architect playground. The well, the list, green here. Go ahead and pitch in. <laughs> Every time we get with a new audience, the list of corporate sponsors. Uh, so I get to your business cards before I leave the um, No, but you know, in, in, like Tom said, you know, there are there's programs that might be available for putting fencing in. Um, you know, sometimes uh, the uh, electric cooperatives, they'll have, or they used to have, programs that would pay for you to put in LED lights. Mm -hmm. You know, we look for those opportunities. There may not be a light out there, but we'll always look for those. Anything that can help out. So you're on schedule, we're working on a budget, you can sleep well at night, project's moving <laughs> forward. Moving forward, yeah. And as you can tell, there's quite a bit of work that's been going into this. There's a lot of stuff behind the scene that's, that's going on. But I'm impressed, guys. Yeah, I've been right. really impressed with, with everything that's going on and uh, the things that this we're seeing. So, <laughs> looks pretty good. It looks really good. What's the, uh, the light source that we're seeing this? What, at what point do we allow our community to kind of see this progress? and? 
how some of the work has been done. Is Sarah working on I mean, I've already begun showing the floor plans to, to folks just to kind of give them a general idea of what it's going to look like uh, inside. So. Some of those pictures should be at the tailgate in two weeks. That's, that's a, part of our that's food. That's a good idea. Can we get PDFs of these? Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll email you all this. You can have these boards tonight. And if you need us to print these and roll them up and for more boards, just tell us whatever you need. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's we'll print these at the office. That'd be great. Uh, we have a homecoming, Scott, coming up here in a week or two. Okay. And we thought about maybe taking some of this stuff out, just yeah. kind of yeah. letting the folks as they come into the football game or the tailgate to, to yeah. view this. Sure. Awesome. Get their feedback. I think that'd be a great idea. Yeah. Yeah. That's correct. Board <laughs> <laughs> members, any other comments? Anything else that you'd like to discuss? Gentlemen? Okay. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thanks. Thank Thank you. You. Water yeah. I've got that, Scott, on the agenda. We're going to approve that. You really need that approved, just FYI. Yes, I need that. Yeah. 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 I would assume. I would say, sir, I would say, sir, I would say, 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 I
Next, we have the approval of the construction manager at risk contract. And Brian has sent that information to you. Uh, he's been working with uh, Rock Miller and getting that worked out. Uh, Brian, do you have anything you want to add to that other than what was sent out to the folks? No, nothing. Not, I mean, I'm happy to answer any questions anybody would have. Um, but I, you know, I just talked to Bill before he left. And assuming the board approves the contract, he, he's going to sign. We'll have a signed contract here immediately, probably tomorrow. He's not too worried about it if he's already engaged in work projects. So no, I think no, and, and I, you know, but but things like the contracts, those are lawyer details that sure. I have to details. I have to, I have to take people. So. I mean, do you have any concerns? I know you have a few things and kind of read through them, but I mean, okay. this. No, I, I, I think the contract's in good shape. I just kind of tried to set out what the back and forth had been because you kind of start out with an AIA document that's got a lot of boilerplate and you put in things that are specific to the job and then there are a little thing, you know, the forms are great, but you can't ever just use the form. You've got, every, everything's a little bit different. And the back and forth, I think pretty much I've, I've copied the three guys on the uh, uh, committee, but not everybody else. So this was kind of to tell you these are kind of the things where we were back and forth were things that I just thought were, it, it's kind of clip notes. I didn't want everybody to look at the whole thing. Okay, so. But if anybody has anything or any concerns, I'm happy to address them as best I can. Administrator's recommendation to accept the uh, construction manager at risk contract with Rockmore. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second on the floor. Comments, questions, concerns? I really liked him. He was good. Bill? Bill? Yeah. 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 They, they spent a lot of time with us. And it's been pretty down to earth. It's three hours. I, I just want to say, we expected like an hour and a half. The yeah. next thing you know, it's lunch. Yeah. 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 They're. they're uh, All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Okay, lastly on the administrative side is a request permission to, ske to schedule executive session to discuss personnel matters. Motion. Motion. Second. Mr. Grimbecker? Yes. Mr. Weiss? Yes. Mr. Lee? Yes. Mr. Alvin? Yes. Mr. Tanner? Yes. So two hours Thursday for us for that? <laughs> what are you saying, Mr. Mr. Williams? 